dear members of the early community, ladies and gentlemen, when I was a doctoral student more than 25 years ago, I regularly had to present the current status of my research project in a doctoral and postdoc students colloquium. After these presentations, I developed the habit to log the information I got from my supervisor and my other research fellows to make sure that the feedback and the information wouldn't get lost. In writing these personal protocols, I discovered that the process of writing helped me to better understand my own research project and to develop my ideas about my research questions and the design of my studies further. These experiences in writing up these personal protocols made me confident that journal writing is a promising learning method that is worth to be investigated systematically and it should also be taught to high school students as well as university students as a medium for self-regulated learning. I experienced the process of writing as a silent dialogue with myself in which I externalized my initially vague ideas on a computer screen, read and revised what I had written and most importantly I almost always discovered new ideas through the process of writing. And especially I discovered new ideas through the interplay between writing and reading. These experiences made me confident that journal writing is a powerful learning method. In my keynote talk, I will present the main tenets of my research program on writing to learn, which focuses on journal writing. As I conducted the bulk of the empirical studies on journal writing together with colleagues who once were or still are at the University of Freiburg, we called our approach to journal writing, the Freiburg Self-Regulated Journal Writing Approach. Our approach to journal writing takes up an old idea from early writing research in the last century. According to the theoretical assumption, a great deal of our knowledge stored in long-term memory is tacit and therefore not directly accessible to us. Think of our knowledge stored in long-term memory as an iceberg with the large majority of the knowledge being underwater and only the very top rising out of the water into working memory. Accordingly, through the very process of writing, this tacit knowledge becomes explicit and our, short, our, our thoughts take shape and new insights may emerge. Hence, we conceive of journal writing as an expressive way of writing which allows learners to freely develop their ideas about subject matter. We therefore consider journal writing explicitly not as problem solving where the writer seeks to solve a rhetorical problem, for example, um, presenting evidence to an support an argument in a convincing manner or telling a plausible and coherent story. In contrast, a high-quality learning journal is not expected to be a, a rhetorically well-shaped text. It can appear to be rather imperfect and idiosyncratic from a reader's perspective, but may nevertheless prove to be highly beneficial to the writer herself. We call this theoretical assumption the genre-free principle in analogy to John Sweller's goal-free effect. The genre-free principle means that in journal writings, writers do not have to pay attention to the rhetorical aspects of writing, but are encouraged to focus their attention on comprehending the subject matter. However, it is a widespread phenomenon that students tend to interpret learning tasks in rather superficial ways. Accordingly, we found in our initial studies on journal writing that our students wrote rather brief summaries on the learning content rather than elaborating their understanding of subject matter or identifying gaps in their own understanding. To counteract students' tendency to keep their mental effort at the minimum, we developed several instructional design principles to support students in enact cognitive, in enact beneficial cognitive and metacognitive activities in journal writing. These activities are organization and elaboration, 
For example, how can you structure the learning content in a meaningful way? Which examples can you think of that illustrate, confirm or conflict the learning contents? Metacognitive activities such as monitoring of comprehension, which main points haven't I yet understood and also planning of remedial strategies, how can I overcome my comprehension problems? As these cognitive and metacognitive activities are at the heart of self-regulated learning, we called our approach, our theory and our theoretical um, perspective on writing to learn the self-regulation view in writing to learn. In my keynote address, I will elaborate more in more detail on the self-regulation view and I will review the tenets of my experimental studies on design principles to support self-regulated learning by write, journal writing. And I will also mention more recent development such as the idea of spoken versus written learning journals and the concept of journal writing as preparation for future problem solving in teacher education. I am looking forward to meeting you in Thessaloniki.